UV mapping in its simplest form is the process of projecting a 2D image onto a 3D model surface. But wait, that's it? I could have sworn there was way more. Well there is, and I'm going to do my best at keeping it as simple as possible whilst as informative as possible. So take this 3D cube for example. If I wanted to give it a texture, I would first need to do the process of UV unwrapping. This is where I add seam lines across the object's edges, more specifically the edges of the faces making up the object. The reason I specify this is because seam lines can be put anywhere. There is, however, preferred places to put them because you want to hide them as much as possible. So let me break it down further. Imagine you've been given a square piece of paper and you've been tasked with turning it into a cube. First you will draw and cut out what is called a net. This cutout can then be folded into the 3D object. So what I do is I take this concept but reverse it. Seam lines act as the cutout so we can unfold the object. This can also be applied to more complex shapes but you can split it into multiple nets if you want to. They can even carry over multiple squares. One main difference between the example I've just given and a 3D model is the 3D model's nets can be overlaid on top of each other. You can change the size of the net as well whilst maintaining the final size and shape of the actual 3D model. This is because UV unwrapping does not manipulate the object, rather just the 2D image that gets projected. So when making these nets, you need to be aware of two main issues, stretching and overseaming. Stretching can occur when you do not place seam lines to break up certain faces, such as this corner piece. And overseaming is just when you break up faces unnecessarily, giving you visible seam lines on your object. For those wanting to make this process easier on themselves, I highly recommend using this checker texture as it indicates any stretching and shows the size difference of the nets. I use this a lot when I'm doing my UV unwrapping. I definitely think you'll find it benefits you a lot more when you can actually see and visualize how your UVs are impacting the overall projection. So now you know the UV unwrapping process, what about the actual textures themselves? There are seamless textures and there are seamed textures. So what I mean by this is seamless textures are able to be put next to each other to create a repeating pattern. So can the seamed textures, but the difference is seamless textures do not have any breaks in it. So if I placed it above, to the right, to the left, or below of one another, as long as the corners are touching, it will look like one continuous surface. The application for seamless textures will be most commonly found where you require a repeating pattern and the opposite is true for seam textures. There's another topic to mention when talking about UV texturing, and that is the use of multiple textures to create the overall material. On screen, you will see different images that when combined can create this effect on our free model. The main textures you will often find being used together is the base colour, roughness, height and normal textures. There are more but those are the most common ones. The most important thing to note about these textures is that they are not actually changing the shape of our object, instead just changing how the surface looks when viewed. One last thing, UV simply stands for the X and Y coordinates of the texture. But you may be asking, why not just keep them as X and Y? Well, this can become confusing as the X and Y are already being used with the Z as coordinates to make up the 3D object. Therefore, we just use the next letters in the alphabet. 